Okay. We talked about arrays last time. Just going to bring those things up, talk about the syntax and everything that I went through one by one. And uh, uh, so what we're going to do today, we're going to talk about arrays on, one more time to kind of remember what they were. Then we'll talk about what we call parallel arrays uh, to see how we can keep records of the same different aspects of the same record uh, for many people. We understood that arrays are uh, created when we want to create many variables in one shot. I want to have 50 integers, 500 doubles, 9,000 something, whatever I want to create. How do I create it? We create an array so we can have a bunch of information in our uh, program. Therefore, we have more memory to deal with. So, and then from there, we're going to go to uh, parallel arrays, which essentially means uh, how do I create several arrays with the same length to keep track of different aspects of the same thing? Let's say I have a series of student numbers and their GPA. So I cannot hold this in one array, right? So I create, and I have 35 students that I want to have their student number and their GPAs. So what do I do? I create an array of 35 integers. Then I create an array of 80, 35 doubles for the GPA. Then I'm going to say the first one is for the first student, the first two, the first GPA and the first student, and the second GPA and the second student number. And I keep track of the records of the same person. So this is called parallel array that we're going to go through. After that, I'm going to teach you how we can actually package few things in one thing and create our own variable. We have variables that uh, create, like we, we can create a, an integer to hold a row number. I can create uh, an integer to hold social insurance number. I can uh, create a, a double value to hold the capacity of something. But if I want to, for example, hold the well, anybody over here doesn't know what is an SKU number? SKU? So you go to grocery stores, you beep the thing, that reads the SKU, okay? Or UPC, depending on what this. So SKU is for private stocks that you have, numbers that companies put. UPC is international, like global. So you have one number that that number corresponds to the item. So let's say you want to have price of stuff kept in something. So the solution for parallel array is to have an array of SKUs, that is an integer number, and then have a, an, another array with the exact same length of double values to hold their, their price. Another solution could be if, you could, if I could create a package and I call that package an item. And I say an item has an SKU, so I put an SKU inside an item. An item has a price. I put a price inside an item. Now, when I say item, it comes with two things, an SKU and a price. Now, instead of creating two arrays to take, keep track of stuff, I can create an array of items. And because each item holds the two values in it, I don't need to worry about it. So that's hopefully going to be the end of what we are going to talk about today. And then. Um, for the workshop, what I will do, I'm going to create a main, and I'm going to ask you to create one or two functions that utilizes that. So you simply do, so essentially what I do over here in the, uh, in the class, I, cut, I change the, uh, the topic, change the story of it, and ask you to redo it. Look at the notes, see how it's done, set it aside, then pick the function that I ask you to write for your workshop, do it separately. The code is almost identical. So if you just write it from the notes, you're not going to learn anything. Read the notes, try to understand how it's done, set it aside, then do the workshop. And if you see it didn't work, put your workshop, don't compare the, note, uh, the, the codes. Put the workshop aside, 
read the notes again, then go back to the workshop and try to fix it that way. If you did it five times and it didn't work, then put the code side by side and try to do it, okay? This is how you can do it uh, and you can learn. So. So we talked about syntax, syntax of an array, and we said a syntax of an array is essentially uh, the same type that you use for any variable that you use. You put a name for your array, and the name of the and in front of the name of the array in the square brackets you put how many of those things you want, and you can initialize it using a set. Uh, notation, which is open curly bracket and close curly bracket, and put initial values for individual items. If the values you put over here does not match the number, it should be smaller. It cannot be bigger. If it's bigger, you'll be in trouble. If the number of values you put over here is smaller than number of array that you have, the rest of the stuff will be set to null, to zeros. So if I only put three over here, then A0 will be 3, and the rest of them will be all zeros. And that applies to everything. If it's an array of doubles, if it's an array of integers, if it's an array of characters, they're all going to be null, all zero. Okay? Are we okay with this? That's the syntax of an array. How do we create, how to create an array and how to initialize it. So, <clears throat> I'm sorry... My voice goes off and on, so if you see I sound like a Disney character every now and then, my apologies. It's, uh, um, can't do anything about it. All right. How do we access the array elements? So essentially, an element of an array is essentially a single variable that is member of that array. So when I say integer A5, I have total of five elements. In C language, everything starts from zero. So when I say five, it means zero, one, two, three, four. Five doesn't exist. Remember, at any moment you create an array, the size that you see, that one doesn't exist. That element doesn't exist. So if I say an array of 532 integers, 532nd element is out of range. 531st is the last one you can access. Remember that. The number of elements is always one less than the size because it starts from zero. Are we all clear about that? So in here, I am putting everything in a loop and simply show the values one by one. One thing you need to remember, and it's extremely important to, to know that. One thing that is extremely important to know. Um, did I bring, the, I think I brought the utils. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, um, I'll, we'll, we'll fix those things too. So it's going to be an amalgam of things, so we're going to go through it step by step. So by doing something like this, I go through every single element and I print them. And obviously, I put the size that I have for the, for the, for the uh, array over there and the size that I have over here. And this identifies that it's going to go less than that. Therefore, when it comes out of this thing, I will be 5. It's always that, that's always how a loop works. The condition goes false. So the first time the condition goes false, I will be 5. Therefore, the values that are printed are going to be as such. So, running the program one by one. I think I have something wrong in here. Let me see what is that. Ah, that's C++ talking, don't worry. Okay, so it comes into uh, 
Oh, I, did I go to the wrong one? I went, sorry, I'm, I'm editing the wrong thing. Give me a second. Okay, let me remove everything, make sure everything is done properly. My apologies. Okay, stop. Yeah, as I was saying, I go through the elements one by one. And obviously, it's going to print the elements one by one with the space in between. And those are all the values that I have in the array. OK? So that's essentially how arrays work. Now, <clears throat> next, uh, to kind of beautify it and make it comma separated. I need to put commas after uh, between them to separate them. So what I will do over here is this. I'm going to say, if this is the first one, don't put a comma. For the rest of them, add a comma after. OK? So in here, I'm going to say if, that's an if. If i is equal to 0, if, uh, if i is not equal to 0, print a comma. So I'm going to make it a comma separated thing. And I don't need the space anymore. So now when I run it, the first one that is 0, no comma is going to get printed. It's going to be the value that for the rest, a comma will be printed. Now I have comma separated values printed as the arrays. Are we OK down to this point? Now, having these things, we can receive all every single value from the array from the entry. The, the, the only thing you need to uh, realize and, and consider is that each element is a variable of that type. So when I say AI, this AI of mine is a single integer. So if you are giving it to a scanf, you have to put an ampersand beside it to extract its address exactly like any other integer that you had. So each element of an array is a single entity. And you need to realize that. So this one receives the array one by one, receives the, <clears throat> the values one by one from the entry and puts it in the, in the, in the array. So um, if I just run down to this point, what happens is going to put 0 at the, for the first one. So that's element number 0. So I'm going to put over here 10, 20, 30, 40, and 50. And every, now, if I look at the array over here, you will see that the values are 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. Everything is over there entered into it. Now I can, for example, print it backwards. So we've done this last time. So wrong place here. So it prints everything backwards, and a new line, and so on and so forth. Are we OK with the syntax of arrays? We said arrays are weird things. Arrays are really weird things. And I'll tell you why. We said arrays are weird things. We said that when we deal with an array, <clears throat> Unlike other stuff, when you create an array, an array works like this. So an, an array is essentially <clears throat> an array is essentially series of variables somewhere in memory, and then you have one, and then you have one, what we call pointer pointing to it. So this essentially is your A, 
the A that you had over here, So when you say A5, that's your A, and your individual uh, elements actually are in the memory somewhere else. So when you are dealing with an array, you are essentially telling to the program where they are. So each one of these things, that's number one. First one, second one, third one, fourth one, and fifth one. And those are the five integers that I have. So when I say A5, A is this one, this is A0, this is A1, A2, A3, A4, A5, and so on and so forth. So <clears throat> when I look at it, this is how it's going to look like. This is going to be A0. This is going to be A1. This is going to be A2. A3. And A4. Are we okay? Are we okay with this? <clears throat> now, having something like this brings us to the next thing. When you want to pass these things to the function, for example, if I want to print an array over here, if I want to print an array and put it in a function, what do I write? This is how it's done. <clears throat> when you want to print the thing in an array, in here I'm going to say void prn ints, for example. I'm printing integers. And I'm going to say over here, print get an array. And I do like that. That means I don't know how many, just get an array. Okay? So it's not receiving an individual. It knows series of stuff are coming in. And in, because it doesn't know how many are they, you actually have to mention over here what is the size. Otherwise, it will not know what the size is. So what happens over here is that your function, your PRN function over there that you had, so if this is your function, that function has, that function has one pointer in it, and that pointer's name is That pointer's name is array. It's an array that only has a pointer, no body. There is no body or nothing to point to. When you call the function, so in here, what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to say, <clears throat> let's call the function. I'm going to take this and put it in the function. So instead of Instead of A, I'm going to call it A, A array. That's array. And in here, I'm going to say integer i. So this is going to be my function. And in here, instead of just uh, uh, calling the, uh, doing the loop over here, I'm going to say A and 5. <clears throat> and obviously, in here, I'm going to remove the size and put it over here. OK? So it's the exact same thing. I just brought it up. So when this is called, what does it do? It passes A by value to this one, correct? So anywhere A was pointing to, now array will point to. So what happens is this. In your function, in your function, so this function is, this is your print ints, prn ints, OK? In the prn ints function, you will have the array pointing to the same place that A is pointing, because you called it. <clears throat> so the, whatever is inside A goes over there. Now what happens? Print ints thinks it has as an array of its own, but it's not. It's actually sharing the array that is inside me. There are not two arrays. It's like, it's like, I'm saying this row. Could you please point to that row? Come back, you're too close. <laughs> so this is the, now we are both, 
Do we have two rows of students? No. But if somebody asks me which row, I'm going to say Fardad's row. And you're going to say whose row? What is your name? Gary. So Gary's row. Who? Gary. Gary's row. So Gary's row and Fardad's row are actually the same row. They're not different people. Correct? One is called Fardad's row. The other one's called Gary's row. It's the same thing over here. Thank you very much for pointing. Okay? It's the same thing over here. Array, array is pointing to this one. A is pointing to this one. And the good thing is that <clears throat> if Fardad asks the first person, what is your name? You're going to say? Uh, CJ. Could you please ask his name? CJ. No, ask his oh. name. <laughs> uh, CJ. CJ. So Fardad asks the first person, is CJ. And I'm going to say, from now on, I'm going to call you Charlie. So now if he asks, what's your name, he's going to say? Charlie. Charlie. Why? Because we are both pointing to the same person. It's not two different arrays, it's one. Unlike other variables that you pass to a function and you change them inside the function, you are changing a copy and nothing changes outside, arrays don't act that way because there is no new thing created. They are both pointing to the same place. Do we understand this? All right. And the reason I'm wearing a jacket is that, as you see, I don't have my microphone. Gave it for repair. I'm going to see. So I'm recording the audio with my, with my cell phone. I have to put it in my pocket, so later on I'm going to put the audio on the, on the thing. So this is the audio, that's the video, okay? That's the reason he has, I'm sweating in my jacket. That is the reason for it, I apologize. I'm not crazy, it's just uh, <laughs> I have to do that. <coughs> All right. So, so that's that. So now if I actually run this program, the program runs exactly the same way. It has had actually no difference between the two programs, there is only one thing that over here we need to realize and is extremely important. Take a look. When I do this and I come down over here, I bring my cursor on the thing. You see all the elements are shown, right? So in main, I can, it, main actually knows what is the size of A, correct? It doesn't know the size of A actually. To know the size of A, you have to jump through hoops. It's not as easy. Okay? It doesn't know what is its size, but you can calculate it somehow using certain formulas. Okay? C doesn't know the size of its arrays. In here, through a trick where you create the array, if you play some kind of a trick, you can calculate what the size is. But duh, what you want to do? Uh, you just have it over here. It's fine. You don't need to calculate it. The place that you don't know is other functions. But the problem is that when you go to the other functions, the size of the array disappears. To this one, it's only one element. And it's three, the first one. And when you think about it, it's just looking at the first one. Of course, when you put the index, it keeps going. But it has no idea how many. That's why we are passing the size to it. That's why you need to realize the C language does not know what a size of an array is. It is impossible for it to know. You can't, you, you can't ask the language, what is the size of this array? You have, to always to carry, you have to always carry the size with you, which is just fine. Are we okay down to this point? So now if I come over here and I, uh, what do I do? And I, uh, and I print them one, one by one, Obviously, it's going to print exactly the same amount of values that we have over there. Right? Uh, but the beautiful thing, side effect over here is the fact that now I can get the one that actually receives the values from keyboard, and I can put that one in a function too. I could not do that with a regular function. A regular function must return something so I can get the values out. In this one, I simply say void, read int, and I'm going to put integer array and integer size, exactly like the other one. Obviously, I'm going to say it's an array. And for all those people, you cannot put a size in here. Compiler doesn't understand it. 
An argument cannot receive a size. It doesn't make sense. That's not how the arrays are passed. It has to always remain empty. It's like a snake with two heads. You can never, ever have size for the second one, OK? All right. So now I'm going to paste those things over here. Enter, I'm going to say over here, percent %d. And in here, print the size. And in here, uh, I'm going to create an integer i for the loop. And I'm going to say, get the address of array i. So as you see, nothing is changed in here. It's identical to the other one. And I can come down over here, remove this one, and simply say, read ints, and pass a and 5. This is possible. Int is not returning anything. Read int is not returning anything. But because the array pointer over here is pointing to the same location of the integer array, when it receives and puts the values in here, it's actually putting it in the original one. So the values of the original thing changes. Therefore, when I come over here and I read the, the values, and that's because users don't know that things start from zero. It's only programmers. So I'm going to add one to the index, not to confuse people, say zero column. I want to start from one. So I'm just going to add a one over there to that one so, so they, they understand. So when I come over here, let me uh, clear these things for a second. Actually, yeah, clear these things for a second. OK. so. Now when I come over here, as you see in here, I have all the values in A. But as soon as I go up, but as soon as I go up in read ints, now array becomes the one that actually points to the rest of the stuff. So when it starts reading the values, it's actually putting the values in the original one. So now in here, when I actually run it, and I put 1 over here, and I scan it. When I put 10 over here, and I hit Enter, what happens is that the 10 actually goes in here. Do we understand this? And because of that, A is actually changing. That's one of the side effects, good side effects of an array which means you can actually use it to change the values remotely. We couldn't do that before. With arrays, we can change everything remotely, easily. OK? Now, so now it comes out. So. Because I'm in a function, I can do shift, ele shift F11. It means run through the whole function and get out. That's what I want to do. So essentially, I'm going to debug, and I'm putting shift F11. It means step out, which means run the whole function and get out. So it runs the whole function, 20, 30, 40, and 50. And as you see right now, and I, when I come back over here, you'll see all the values are changed to 10, 20, 30, 50, and 40. So the original value changes. And so on and so forth. So we're going to come over here, and that's that. Oh, this didn't work because it wasn't changed. <laughs> I had to say over here, I is set to 5. It cannot be 0 anymore because in the other one, loop changed, and it started from 5. Now it's not. So. So now if I run it entirely like that, when I run the whole thing, clear all. Now I can actually do, and everything is passed through the other one, and values are received. That's the gist of the arrays. We have nothing else to talk about. That's essentially, that applies to everything, people. Everything. OK? Now, talking about parallel arrays, how do we deal with all these stuff? Talking about parallel arrays, 
This is what we do. So as, as I said, let's say we are in a grocery store and we have an SKU, int SKU. So SKU is going to be the SKU number for whatever we have. And I want to set them all to zero. How do I do that? I just make the first one zero and everything becomes zero. So I'll say maximum of 500. I don't know how many items I have. Whenever you don't know what the numbers are, you talk to the client. What is the maximum number? Possible. They say, we're not going to have more than 500 items in the store. So you create an area of 500. You're not going to use the rest. You're just going to use the few at the beginning, but that's what it is. Now I need to know the price of every single item. So what do I do? I'm going to say over here, uh, double price, and I'm going to make that 500 too. And I'm going to make every, everything zero over there too. So I'm going to say equal to zero. So it fits, sets, fits, sets the first one, and everything else will be zero. Let's say I want to have an inventory of the system and see how many of these things I have in a store. So I have three of these, four of that, how many of these things I have. What do I do? I'm going to have another thing for quantity. So I'm going to have integer quantity, and that's going to be 502. And I'm going to set everything to zero. So. SKU 0, price 0, quantity 0 is for the first item. SKU 1, price 1, quantity 1 is for the second item. And it keeps going. So now, if I want to read the items, so I'm going to say read items. OK? What do I receive? I receive int S. You can put the same name not to get confused. But remember. Although you are putting the same name, but there are two different variables because they are in two different functions. OK? So you have this thing over here. So essentially, what we have over here will be this. You're going to have, does it have an eraser in here? So you're going to have something like this. So this is going to be your SKU. And this is going to be an SKU too. They are both SKUs, but in different functions. So you have two SKUs, both pointing to the same place. Are we OK with this? All right. So we're all. So I'm going to say get the SKU. Whoa. <laughs> Sorry. Get the SKU. Get the, uh, what are the other ones, prices? and get the quantity. And I don't know how many. That's the number of things that I have. Then I start from 0. I'm going to say enter percent %d and num, not integers, num item, item information. OK, now I'm going to put over here num. And one by one, I'm going to get it. So I had on get int over there, right, in the utils. Oh, I have a get double too. Good, so I have a get double, get int, life is beautiful. Or I can do the use scanf, doesn't matter. Let's use scanf for now. Um, so in here, I'm going to say, Print f yada yada yada. So that I'm, I'm going to go to new line in here, and I'm going to say uh, print f uh, sku. Go to new line and show a prompt, and in here I'm going to receive the sku. And I have to, I'm going to have the exact same thing <clears throat> for price. 
obviously this is an LF. And in here, I'm going to have uh, the last one is quantity. QTY. And be done with it. So this read receives a parallel array of information about the same thing. Now, if I want to get five items, I can do that. And I can print the five items, too. And not only that, I can actually do calculations and stuff. So in here, I'm going to do the exact same thing for the for print ints. I'm going to have print items. And I'm going to put them over here exactly the same way. But I'm going to introduce you with something new. Think about it for a second. What do you think? What is the answer to this question? Does print need to change the value of SKU price or quantity? What do you think? No. Its job is to print. When you read a book, you don't change its content. When you write a book, you change its content. Right? When you read a book, you don't change it. You can enforce that. Although I can say writing your book, it's a bad habit. You're not supposed to do it. When you get a book from library, you see people highlight it, you want to kill yourself. Right? You don't want that. You don't want them to change it. To actually tell to people and actually enforce it. Say, hey, do not only read these. Read only. Do not write them. This is what you can do. You put a const over here. So you can still access them to print them. But you, if you change them, compiler is going to say, hey, this is read only. You can't do it. So remember, always look at your logic. If your logic is receiving an array, it's a dangerous thing. You may change it by mistake. And you don't want to. If your logic is not supposed to change it, make it a constant. That's a safe thing to do. Now, I can actually make it, oh, first, <clears throat> I can actually make it beautiful. So what I'm going to do in here, uh, let's say the SKU, let's say SKU is five digits. So I'm going to say printf. In here, I'm going to say SKU. And in here, I'm going to say quantity. And I'm going to say price. And I'm going to go to new line. And then I'm going to put a, a line underneath like that, and I'll go to new line. When you put two literal strings back to back, it glues them together. It's like as if you put one. So it's a good tool. If instead of writing one big long printf, you can just bring the next one down. This printf. And this one is identical. So instead of writing in one line, you can just, you don't need to separate them with anything. It just sticks them together, glues them together. So I'm doing that. Now, for SKU, uh, and let me actually do so. For SKU, uh, let's say one, two, three, four, let's say five digits for SKU. So I'll put a plus over here. For quantity, I need three, but this is big, so I'm going to put it over here. And price, I'm going to put it over here, like that, right? Is it price, quantity, or quantity price? Which one is right? Should I put the price first or quantity? As a matter. Wait, what did you say? Oh, this is OK. OK, so I'm going to put the price like this, OK? So that's going to be that. So <clears throat> now what I'm going to do over here is I'm going to say, I'm going to say something like this. I'm going to say, OK, printf, so I want to print the SKU, right? So I'm going to say print SKU. That's percent D, correct? And put a bar. It's going to go right under the plus. I'm going to plan to do, though, do so. Then I'm going to say percent LF. And I'm going to put a bar that's going to go right. Oh, sorry, percent D again for quantity. Right? <laughs> sorry, I'm. 
I'm, I'm exhausted. My apologies. <laughs> and the next thing I'm going to do over here, put percent LF, and then go to new line. Problem is, how do I make sure that this integer is printed in exactly one, two, three, four, and five spaces? You just put a five over here. It means print the integer in five spaces and put a bar. Now, how do I know that? How do I do quantity in here? How many? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I put an eight over here. How many for the price? One, actually price, uh, let's make it a little bigger. I'll tell you why later. So I'm going to do it like that. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And I'm going to put a nine LF over there. Okay, now I'm going to print the quantity. Now I'm going to print SKU I and price I and and what is the other one? Quantity and then price. Quantity and then price. Not only that, I can actually do calculations now. I have everything coming in, right? So I can have something like this over here. Uh, price. Uh, I'm going to say double total price. I want to see how much how much money I have in my inventory. I want to see how, uh, my, inventory, my, my inventory, how much money does it have. So I'm going to have that one set to zero. And in here, every single time I'm printing it, I'm going to say total price plus equal price of price of I multiply by the number that I have in the uh, number that I have in the, in, the, in, the, in the store. So if I have five of these, it's going to be five. So now my total price is actually showing the whole thing. And when it's done and over with, what I need, what I can do is simply bring this down and say printf, close that thing down, and then come down over here, say, Uh, what do I say to a uh, total price or uh, what do I what do you call the total thing um, total <laughs> okay total <coughs> total and I'm gonna put a space over here percent how many do I have nine it was right nine LF nine LF and I'm gonna put over here the price uh, the total price so I'm gonna show the total price too Okay, now <coughs> integers don't have any partials, so I don't have any how many digits after the decimal point. Prices do. Price has two digits after the decimal point for the cent, right? So you can do that in the in the floating points, in the doubles or floating points. I can say print print in nine spaces, and put two digits after the decimal point. Ta da. Same thing over here. So just to look, make it look nice. So it's got to be two digits. Now let's run it and see what's going to happen. Please appreciate the fact that I'm not going to print anything in reverse. We're going to do something better later. But, but appreciate the fact that I have 500 of them and I'm only reading five. OK? So I'm going to say, uh, what was the name? Uh, read items. And I'm going to put SKU, and I'm going to put price, and I'm going to put quantity, and I'm going to say five. So I'm just reading five items. That's it. OK? Then after that, what do I do? I'm going to say uh, print items, SKU, price, and quantity, and five again. Right? now. <clears throat> I'm going to go through this. One thing I have to do over here, I need to make the read items better because uh, you, have to, you, have, you, you have to always make things clear for, for the person who's entering this stuff. Afterwards, do something like this so they know data entry is finished and another new one because it's not one thing that I'm entering. I'm entering five things for the thing. So in, I'm going to say over here, item number, enter item number, 
and I'm going to put a number over there. So it actually tells what is the number. So <clears throat> I'm going to just run it, and then we'll see what happens. And then I'm going to walk through it. So when we run the program, read item is going to kick in and read five items. So it's going to say, enter five item information. Okay. Enter item number one, SKU. I'll put one, two, three. Okay. Enter. Price, I'm going to put $12.33. Quantity, five of them. Number two, quantity four. Number three, price, quantity six. Wow, I should have put three. <laughs> okay, now I'm going to put over here uh, uh, 666, uh, price 2244, uh, quantity uh, three. And the last one is going to be, uh, what do I do, what do I do, what do I do? Um, I put 888, uh, price is 1111, and quantity is 3. And this is how it's going to look like. Ta-da! So as you see, now I printed SKU quantity, shows the SKU for every single one, what are the quantities, and this is the price, and the total price that we have is $518.33 in the system. Now... This is supposed to be at right, but this is better to be at left, right? Not right. I want it to be left justified. Okay? I can do that. I can actually, oh, quantity is okay to be there, but I'd rather have one space over there. So quantity, I'm going to bring it a little, so I'm kind of fine-tuning it. So, <clears throat> so for quantity, I'm going to make it seven and add a space so it doesn't stick to the line over there. So that's that one. And for the SKU, I'm going to say, Left justified. When you put a dash, it means bring it to left. You are printing in five spaces, but let it stand at left. And I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna put five anymore. I'm gonna put two because <laughs> I don't want to print type for for three days over there. Actually, it's a good idea. I'm gonna leave the the third one as three. You'll see that the third one is gonna be garbage. Or let's make this one twenty. <laughs> You'll see that I enter two and it prints twenty and it's all zeros. Well, we'll see. So I'll run it. So in here, it's going to be 111, 33.33, uh, and it's going to be 555, and it's going to be 1111. Oh, quantity 555. Okay, lots of items I have over there. Well, it's okay. I didn't read the thing. But anyways, I'm going to put over here, this one SKU is uh, uh, 999, uh, 2222, and quantity is 10. And as you see, it's printing zeros for everything else, and it's... $18,720.35 because I have 500 and 500 of 55 of this one. Okay? But now it's left justified that it looks nice. We okay? I could make this one actually print three zeros. I'm not going to tell you how. Okay? You can do all that. Okay? You can actually say I want it to be left justified. I want all the spaces to be filled with something. There is no problem. You can do all that. But that's for future. But this is just down to this point. So now we know. This is called parallels. So with parallels, you create several arrays for the same thing, and you create parallel arrays for it. OK? Are we OK down to this point? Do you mind if we not have a break, finish the thing, and go earlier? OK, let's do that. Thank you. So, but that doesn't make sense. Think about it for a second. What if I had 50 different things in here? I had, I had to create 50 arrays, parallel, and call a function with 50 arguments? I could, but it's painful. You don't want to do that. When you're carrying your laptop, what are you bringing with you? A separate touchpad with a separate keyboard and a separate monitor and a separate CPU? No, it's all packed in one thing. You pack your laptop and you say, I have 10 laptops. Therefore, you have 10 screens. You have 10 keyboards. You have 10 touchpads, right? We need to have something like that. I don't want to have stuff like that. This doesn't make sense. 
I can package all these things. How can I do that? Instead of doing that thing, what I can do is actually this. One of the problems is parallel arrays is that what if I ask you to keep people's name? Remember with names, we, we said it's kept in something like it called a string. And we said a C string is literally a character array that the end of the values are pointed with an null. If I want to have 50 names, how can I do that? It's already an array. Should I create an array of 50 arrays? OK, that's, uh, it's, it's, it's crazy. But for these, for this, uh, if we package stuff, things become easier. So instead of just doing that, I'm going to create something called an item, a package called an item. So I'm going to create, I'm going to construct an, uh, a package of items. What do I do? I write struct item. And I do that. That means create a box called item. What do I have in an item? I have an SKU. I have quantity. And I have price. Now, whenever I say item, it actually means a package of price, SKU, and quantity. I put them all together. It's one thing. <clears throat> How do I create one? You create it like this. So I say, to create a, an item, you write struct again. You write the name of the item, and you call it i. Now, i over here is one package of item that has three things in it. OK? That's it. Three to, how do I actually set the values? Fardad's head. I use apostrophe s to say what belongs to something. Laptops monitor, right? Computers, mouse, the lady's glasses, right? So we are saying we are actually using apostrophe S. Apostrophe S in C language is a dot. So I'm going to say I's price is equal to 33.23. Now I'm going to say I's quantity is 10 of them. Now I'm going to say I's SKU is Four, four, four. I want to print it, pass it to a function. So we're going to create a function void uh, prn item. So I'm printing an item. In here you say struct item um, a. And you print it. How do we print it? I'm going to bring it from here. Because we already have it. I'm going to bring the print from here, copy. So I'm going to print the item like this. So in here, it's the SKU. I'm going to say A's SKU. This is the quantity. I'm going to say A's quantity and A's price. So I'm printing the three things. OK, now in here, I can say PRN item. And I can put over here I. So what's going to happen? Let's take a look. It, it comes over here. So first of all, if you look at I, it actually shows you what the stuff are in the I. You see? It says I has price, SKU, and quantity. And these are the values for it. And then I first set the price. Now if I look at I, the price is actually set. You see that? It's, 
33.22. Okay? And then it keeps going down and everything is set. Now I'm passing everything by value over here. So A will be a copy of I. It passes over there, goes in here. If I look at A, A has the exact same value. Unlike arrays, structures carry their structure because you know what an item is. An array, you don't know what the size is. A structure, a package is passed. If I give you a laptop, you know it has a monitor. I don't need to specify it. Are we okay with this? So as soon as I pass this, it's going to print them all out. So it's going to print the SKU, yada, 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 and we're going to see it's going to print exactly what we wanted. Are we okay with this? Are we okay with this? All right. <clears throat> so how do we initialize a structure? A structure is initialized like an array because it's really a collection of stuff. The difference between a structure and an array is that array has elements of exactly the same type. Structure does not. For every single one, you have to create a, uh, put a different type of value. So for item i, I'll come over here and I see what it is. It's price, SKU, and quantity, right? So to initialize it, I can actually say equal to price is $11.11. .11. Uh, what is the next one? SKU is uh, 222, and quantity is 300 of them. That creates it. Like arrays, if you set the first one to zero and don't say anything, everything else will be zero. But that's what it is. The difference is that you have different values because I has different types of things. Now I can print the item like this. So I can print the item before. I can print the item before setting and after setting. So the first one's going to be 222, yada, yada, 300, and the other one is going to be 4. Are we okay with this? Are we okay with this? Next thing. Something to remember. You don't need to remember it now. I'm just going to tell you it's going to be good for your health when you write actually professional programs in C++, in C, C++, anything. Always try to sort the variables inside your structure from the biggest one to the smallest one. Never do this. It doesn't make any difference. If I run it, it works perfectly, right? But for some unknown reason, the one that is sorted from big to small is more efficient than the other one. Why? Because the sky is high. Just remember that in the back of your mind. So if you have something like that. Now, what's beautiful about item is that in here, what I can do is this, that I didn't do in the other one. In here, I can actually put an array. I can write over here character name. And I put over here, say, 41. So now my item has a name. You can actually put individual names for your items. One by one, you can scan them and then write the name and, and be done with it. OK? And to read the name, so let actually, let's actually create a read item. I want to read a single item. Because I want to read a single item is not an array, it has to return a function, return a value. Oh, so I do it. Remember, <clears throat> item is just an integer. Item is a double. Item is a long. Item is a long double. Item is one thing. It's not, it has five things in it, but it's one thing. So you can literally have a function like this. You can have a function like as you had for print item, you can actually say struct item read item. And in here, you put something like you create an item, item to read. OK, so I'm just going to call item to uh, struct item, sorry, struct item to read. And you return the item at the end. As easy as that. And do all your scanf and everything that you want to do. 
So we did the scanf already. I'm going to bring the scanf over here. I'm going to bring one scanf over here and just copy it over here. So print enter item. Uh, I'm not going to item number. We don't have it. We are getting an SKU. So in here, it's going to be address of to read dot uh, SKU. Everything remains the same. To read dot uh, price. And to read dot quantity. And not only that, I can actually get the name. So I can say printf. item name and I can read a number scanf remember percent s to read a string and in here I'm gonna say I'm gonna say uh, to read dot name if you remember we don't put ampersands for the strings we talked about it in class last time so when it's a string, we don't put, a, put an ampersand because it's already an array. It's already an address, right? It holds the address of the beginning of the array. That's what we do, OK? There is one problem with percent %s, though. When we read this, let's actually run it and see what happens. So I'm going to say over here, read item. Uh, I'm going to say i is set to read item. And I'm going to say PRN item. OK? So it runs and comes up over here. So let's actually run it. So let's put a stop sign over here and run it right to that point. So read. No, what did I do wrong? I know. What did I do wrong? Unresolved external symbol. Did I? What the heck? What happened? Rebuild. Oh, here an item, not print item. OK, let's run it. So it comes right down to this point. Uh, and so it says print item. That's fine. It reads the name. So in here, I'm going to put over here eggs. OK, and for eggs, it's going to, oh, my print item is not printing the name. How much space for a name? It was 41, right? So in here, I'm going to say percent %s. And it's going to be left justified 40 in 40 spaces, <clears throat> percent %s, and put a bar. And in here is going to be a.name. We forgot to do that. And I think we're good, right? And yeah. We're OK. So let's continue. So uh, it's got uh, to gotta get the, let me just uh, completely get out of this. I'm just going to say Shift F11 to get out of the function. So one by one, it's going to get it. SKU is 1, 2, 3. Price is, uh, I don't know, $11.50. Quantity, I have uh, five of them. And I, and I hit Enter. So what happens over here is this. <clears throat> Read items reads, and when you look at uh, the I, when you look at the I over here, you will see that the name is actually red, and it's actually X. And if you look at it, you know that name is an array, and it's E, G, G, S, and then null. That's the string that it reads, right? And print item co goes to print item and prints everything out. So essentially, you're going to have something like this coming out. Eggs, and goes like that. Right? 
5D. <laughs> Sorry, I forgot to put a percent over there. No. Yeah, anyways, so I put over here, I'm, I'm going to write it quickly. So eggs, one, two, three, price 33, quantity 10, and that's going to be it. Are we good? There is a problem with percent S. I'll show you. White milk, okay? It's not chocolate milk, it's white milk. And I hit enter and see what happens. For percent S, space is a stop. Percent S reads until it reaches to uh, uh, any type of white space character. Tab, space, backspace, form feed, page feed, anything that is white space. There is a syntax that you can put in your, there is a uh, expression that you can put in your percent S to read up to backslash N, okay? So the rule for it is this. The format specifier is this. Scanf, okay? So you put percent, and over here you put a, a, a square bracket, and in here, you put up to, so this caret over here means up to. So if I put over here up to A, it means read everything and stop at A. I can put comma, it means read, read everything and stop at comma. So you can say, this is reading a string, up to certain thing. Where we want to stop? New line, because that's where they hit enter, right? So I'm going to say read up to backslash N. So if you do like this, so up to, in here I'm going to write X, and I'm going to say C string, and I'm going to say over here X is uh, the character to stop at, okay? So to do that, in here I'm going to say to read, and I'm going to say up to, up to, backslash in. Now, it actually reads the whole name up to backslash n, which means I can now enter over here white milk, and it reads the whole thing. And that's that. Okay? Parallel arrays and structures. Now, if I want to do the exact same thing that I did in the other one, If I want to do the same thing that I did in the other one, which means I want to have 500 items, what do you do? Instead of creating 500 items, you create I 500 separate things, you write 500. And you can simply say equals to zero. <laughs> that means set everything to zero. If you want to set individual ones, Obviously, you can have like this. So this one's going to be, the price is going to be, uh, it's, uh, the price is going to be 12, 12. Uh, the quantity is going to be 10 or uh, um, SKU is going to be 1, 2, 3. Quantity is going to be 10. And name is going to be, um, I don't know, uh, chord, whatever, okay? So I can do it like that. One by one set them. But if, if I don't want to set anything and make everything completely null, just put a zero at the beginning. It means set everything to zero. It just sets everything to zero. OK? Now I can actually write the exact same code that I have written in here. So in here, instead of read items, I'm going to bring something like struct item uh, array with some number, whatever I have. 
And when I'm reading over here, enter item number, I can simply say, uh, array i is set to read item. I wrote the function for it, right? That reads all the function, all the items. If I want to print all the items, it's the same thing. All I need to do, obviously, I need to have name added over here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and a space. Row. Okay. So in here, I'm gonna go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I need forty of them, right? One, two, three, four, and put a plus over here. And the same thing over there. There you go. And for printing, I simply say PRN item, and I put array i, and for the array, I'm going to pass the exact same thing that I've done over there, which is const struct item array. Done. Array point, uh, array, uh, uh, I forgot the array thingy. Okay, and done. So this, as you see, everything is exactly the same. The only thing that you are doing, you are packaging stuff. And this structure and everything looks the same. <clears throat> Obviously in here, I'm not gonna do it that way. I'm just gonna say, for example, read items. I'm gonna pass the I to it and I'm gonna say two of them. And I'm gonna say PRN items. I and two, and that's it. So you see how simple it got? Take a look at the main, please. That's your main. You show it to any idiot, they will understand what happened. I have items, 500 of them. I am reading items, two of them, printing, two of them, done. So that's how your code becomes readable. Now, if you wanna know how read item works, go focus on that. You go to read items, <clears throat> you gotta say, I have a constant struct item array, which means I cannot change it, and I have series of it that I'm supposed to print. I print a title, one by one I print the items, and I get out. And that's that. We're gonna review this the next day you're coming in, so we'll start again from structures, review it and go forward, okay? That's the day, that's the end of the day, and I am about to faint, so uh, we're gonna go. Sorry, can't take it anymore. <laughs> Are we all good? Any questions before we leave? Suggestions? Objections? Okay, I'm gonna push this right now, and I didn't even run that to see if it works or not, okay? Go home, start fiddling with it. Change it, break it fix it, add features to it, do like that. And then when you see the uh, workshop coming up, it's gonna be identical to this one, but uh, up, just make it different, make it like students instead of items and things like that, okay? Have a beautiful day. Thank you. See you next week.
beautiful. I want to see why it didn't work. Give me a second, please. Thank you. 